Hello and welcome to the XLR Micro Boost 25 LRLE. Starting right up front, we have a light just in case we need to hook up at night. And you have your up and down for the power tongue jack here. And just in case this ever electrically goes out, you do have a little insert there. It's hard to see. There, there we go. You insert a tool and manually override that uh, just in case your power tongue jack ever goes out. Moving to your propane here. It's red because it doesn't have a water going through it. So what I mean by that is when you turn these on, when they're filled up with propane, this will then turn green. And you can also flip it to another one. Same situation, if you turn it on, it'll then turn green. These aren't filled at the moment of this video, so that's why it's still red. You can indicate which one it's reading and taking the flow by it with this little um, point here. So to go to the left, it's reading this tank along with taking propane from the tank. Back here we have your battery disconnect. So to insert it, make sure the little metal piece lines up with the uh, indent there. So now it's in. What you gotta do is just turn it completely. So let me get this out the way here. All right, just turn it completely. You'll hear it quick snap into place. Once you turn it back into place, this cuts off the power from the, your battery to the inside of your camper. Uh, except when you're plugged into shore power or camp power, then it's going off of that. But this is if you're out in the middle of nowhere and taking the power off your battery, you can disconnect it through that. Moving in here, storage. Along with this, this goes for your stabilizer jacks. You can go ahead. in there and start cranking up or down to raise and lower them. Moving on, we have our sewer systems. You have the black and gray tank here. The gray tank is going to be your shower, sink, etc. And your black is going to be your toilet. So what I recommend doing is doing the black tank first and then just because that's the dirtiest water so your toilet paper and whatnot have that go and then do the gray tank last just to give it one last little, little rinse before you go ahead and put your hands back on it. And then just behind this little skirt you have both of your low point drains hot and cold side. Moving on to your outside shower you have a hot and cold side along with your shower head here. If you're camp power or short power that's this little insert here. This is your furnace exhaust so when the heat is on it starts like the excess heat comes out of here. This does get very hot, so just make sure if you have any little kids, just tell them not to touch this or get near it because they will get burned. Just underneath here, for your tires, the little green knob indicates that they're filled with nitrogen. Uh, you are able to fill it with regular air. The tires do not inflate or deflate with temperature change. Black tank flush. So it's in the name, pretty self-explanatory, black tank flush. Like I said, your black tank is going to be your, you know, toilet usage, so toilet paper and whatnot. Uh, so after you pull the black tank, it empties. Go ahead and put a pressurized hose into the black tank. That then turns on a sprinkler inside the black tank, which helps get anything that may have gotten stuck. Just kind of helps wash it all out and make sure it's nice and clean. I still recommend doing the black tank, black tank flush, and still doing the gray tank last. Moving down, you have your satellite and cable, or cable and satellite connections here. You have the city, yeah, okay. And moving down to these two here, you have the fresh water and city connection. Going with the city connection, that's gonna be when you go to a uh, campground. When you go to a campground, go ahead and plug that hose into here. Uh, what you're gonna need is a water pressure regulator. That just helps regulate your pressure. So if there's too much, it could blow your lines. It kind of dumps it down to regulate it. And then if it's too low, uh, it'll kind of steady it out so it won't hurt anything else. Moving on with the freshwater connection. This is when you are gonna wanna go to a, let's say, camping in the middle of nowhere. You go ahead, plug a pressurized hose into here, and then watch the reader on the inside as it grows. It'll eventually fill up. Go ahead, uh, shut it off, close it up, and then when you're out in the middle of nowhere to get water, go ahead and flip on the water pump, and then the pump will then take water from the tank that you just filled up. With that, the drain is usually right, yep, right there behind the tire, the little white piece there. You just grab it and pull it. 
So if there's any excess uh, water after your vacation, go ahead and empty it out with that there. Come into your water heater here. That's how you turn it on, the little white switch there. Got the fuse and then to maximize and minimize your heat. Moving on to your back door here. All you gotta do to open it up is go flip these up, lift up, go out, and then do the same for the other. And then all you gotta do is pull it and then it'll slowly fall down. But make sure you still have a hand on it just in case anything happens. Just kind of walk backwards and walk it down. There's a little backup camera ready if you do purchase one. All you gotta do is unscrew the four screws up there, plug the little camera in, it'll give you a little tablet, have that tablet into your, or plug it into your cigarette lighter. And then with your cigarette lighter, make sure your writing lights are on and the feed will then start to go. So the camera will then start to read on the uh, little tablet you got. Fish link for a dog. TV mount. Uh, so satellite your cable input and then 110 outlet. For your stairs. Make sure your door is completely open. Because all there's this here will then scrape this side. Lift up. Push in. Make sure those little white pieces behind the door so it won't fall out. To adjust this, all you do is hold this down and then move this upper down. Blue tab and pull to lift them down. And then make sure it is completely flush with the metal piece. Otherwise when you shut your door, it'll rip off the furry part along with the rubber seal behind it. And then last but not least, you have your little awning tab there that if this ever logically goes out you can peel that tab off and then you're able to move this in or out manually starting off right on the inside you have a tv mount bracket uh satellite and cable tv and you can choose between the actual you know satellite and cable through this little button here 110 outlets moving to the actual uh like electronic panel here you got your battery reader Fresh tank reader, black tank reader, and gray tank reader. Uh, water pump, so when you do fill up that fresh tank and go to the middle of nowhere, flick this on and then that will start to draw the water from that tank. On you might. Living room lights. Which can not also be toggled with a little switch right in the middle. So if you want to section off different parts, go ahead and do that. Then ramp light, which is back there on the outside uh, corners. It's the same thing as the awning lights. Those little LEDs, the actual LEDs right there. Then awning extend. You know you're fully extended when the flap comes down and then you can start to see the black bar uh, behind it. There we go. You don't want to keep extending it because it will actually fold up the opposite way and break it. Coming down, that's going to be your solar uh, controller here. You can choose your amp or voltage there. This is gonna be your little space heater. Click to turn on. You can do uh, low, high, flame color, and then how long it's going for, which is gonna be five hours. If you want it to run and turn off, just like that. Otherwise, you just tap, turn on and off. Moving on to your toilet, it's just gonna be a foot flush. Um, you are going to need toilet solution along with RV grade toilet paper. The toilet paper will help break down easier and so it doesn't clog your systems. And the um, solution will help break down solids and smells. Moving on to the fan up top. You can open it up and have this little button here. You just press and the fan turns on. Shower. Bedroom. So if you grab the wooden piece and lift up, you can access the underneath along with extra storage. 
You do plan on putting the TV, here's your backer, and then the input along with the 110 outlets. Here's your gas water heater here. Um, I'm not gonna turn it on just because uh, there's actually no water going through it at the moment, so I don't wanna ruin it, because if you do turn it on and start using it without the water in it, it will eventually um, damage it. So you have everything here, on off, up and down for the heat, and this just gives you, if there's a flame, where the power is going, and then in uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. This is where you control your thermostat. Hold the turn on. And then you can do cool, heat, fan, and then if you tap up, you can do fan speed, dry, and then hold. Turn off, and then up and down for the temperature. your fridge you have the controller up here just tells you this is off-grid activities and then you can choose coldest or it goes all the way to basically just cold and coldest and then off moving on just underneath your fridge you have all the breakers and fuses here um, everything's labeled like a house and I do recommend bringing extra fuses just in case but that's just my opinion so um, I would rather just be safe than sorry but you can do whatever you'd like I just recommend those. You can pick them up at any auto parts store like an AutoZone or whatnot. Moving on to your um, carbon monoxide detector. So the little green light indicates that it is on and checking. The only downside with that is that this never turns off, so that green light never turns off. Even if your battery disconnects off, unplugged, this will still draw power, so uh, it will end up killing your battery. So what I do recommend is if you're gonna leave your camper for about three to four days, just go ahead and unplug the negative end off of your battery because then this will finally die. Coming for your oven and stove here. Uh, lights with the turn on. Press and open up. Turn it right to the spark. Same goes for all three. There's no gas going through it, so it's not lighting at the moment. For your oven, you press, turn and hold up the pilot symbol. While that's going on, you can see the tiny little igniter in the back right there. Um, it'll sit there and spark, and then it'll eventually turn or have a little um, flame appear. Once that flame appears, then you go ahead and adjust your temperature to whatever you'd like. Uh, the oven is not going to light right away just because there's no gas purge through the system yet. So what I do recommend doing is lighting all of these three at the same time, letting the gas kind of go through the lines, and then going ahead and trying this. It's not gonna be first try, it'll take you a little while, but eventually it'll start. For these, arrow to the right. You always want to spark to the right, never to the left, because the, uh, the handle will actually snap off. Got your keys here for main doors, and then the other two are for um, side doors and like outside shower. Coming to your ramp here. I have one set up, one not, so you know what it looks like. Setup, there's going to be one piece here. The bottom piece, which would be this piece here. Oh, please straighten out. Uh, this piece, and then having that on top of it. All it is, is you unclip this, then it becomes loose. You go ahead, uh, take both sides, there we go. Pull both sides open like that, and go ahead and lay it down. And you can put your cushions up. 